It's celebrating the birth of our Savior. Amen? Amen. Um, today's message will be the birth of Christ and the man that God led to save Christmas. And uh, that all sounds real smooth and easy, doesn't it? But uh, as we live in this time and this age, and if you will, turn me over to Matthew chapter 2. We're going to look at the birth of our Savior, um, and if our time allows, we'll even look at what that ended up meaning. But as we begin, I would like to begin reading in uh, Matthew chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. And how many of us think this year's been hard? Amen. I know it's been hard. Uh, and uh, don't know how next year's going to be either. But when Christ was born, times were hard for him and his family too. And we take it for granted we've had it so good. But let's read the account of when Christ was born according to the Gospel of Matthew, beginning in verse 1. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold... There came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born, king of the Jews? For, he, for we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, For thus it is written by the prophets, or by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, art now the least among the prince of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people, Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called his wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. When you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him. And they that heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced and was exceeding, with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And I'm going to stop there for just a minute. This tells about the birth of Christ. But there's a lot of things going on here. Here... It had been prophesied a king, a governor would be born. It was prophesied the Savior would come, but they didn't hear that part. Herod was a treacherous, greedy king. And he had got jealous hearing that this new king and this new governor was going to arrive. And such that he tried to deceive the wise men, but because God had appeared to them in a dream, they did not return and tell Herod about the child. God in this time and up until this point before he had became incarnated in a man often and many times appeared to men in dreams. And I'm pointing this out because there's a transition that begins to happen from here henceforth. And the time was Herod was jealous. And as he was jealous and he was upset that this new king, he was going to seek to kill him. And I'll read that to you in just a minute. So can you imagine being raised in a time that all the firstborn might be killed? We live in a time that we live of fears and all the different things that are about us. The COVID, day-to-day uh, -day situations of life. But folks, when Christ was born... He was born in a hard time. There wasn't phones, there wasn't cars, there wasn't hotels. He was born, it said, in a manger. He was born on in a, in a place that had no room for him. 
Maybe you're that individual that feels like there's no room for you in this life. Maybe you feel like that you've been mistreated all your life or that you're being pursued by troubles everywhere you turn. Christ was, and he knows what that's like. But as many problems and troubles that came before Christ, God provided a way to lead him to the greatest of all greatnesses, to be the savior of the world. So let's look at the next thing that God did in verse 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord, when the wise men had left and they went another way to another country, and when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Arise, take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt and be thou there until I bring thee word for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Satan was, uh, Herod was acting in the hands of self-will and self-integrity and pride to Satan's liking. And his goal was to destroy the young child. Now Joseph, being Mary's husband, had to overcome a lot of troubles in his life. First of all, he accepted a woman that was pregnant. And that was reason enough to do away with her or possibly have her killed. The second thing was he had to trust God when it looked like a totally unbelievable situation. Have you been in an unbelievable situation that you've seen no way out? Joseph certainly was. And yet he took the woman that was to bear the Son of God as his wife, and he'd done as God had instructed him with little means or not really knowing what the future would hold. How many of us know what the future really holds? We have to take it by faith. Joseph did that. But as he done that, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and he said, look, arise, take your wife, take the child, and go to Egypt. Because Herod's going to seek to destroy the child. He done this without question. He goes totally uh, unnoticed by most people in life. But God had just appeared to him in a dream. God has the ability to be within us in the Holy Spirit today. And he's began to work within us from this time forward as he is our Savior once he died on the cross. And folks, we think we have it troublesome today. And we, say, we can't see the answers. But folks, Christ knows what that's like. From his birth to his death, he was sought after. He had trouble. Joseph had trouble. He didn't have easy situations in life to deal with. You don't have easy situations to deal with in life. And God brings you through them all. Folks, I can celebrate Christ because I have a Savior that I know is going to have the victory. I want you to be able to celebrate Him and know who He is and have that victory. Just as Joseph did as God had instructed. What is God instructing you and I to do today? Trust Him. Follow Him. And when you have something bad that happens in your life, and in Christ's time, I want to share with you, there's a lot of young firstborn that died. They didn't do anything wrong. But God had a greater glory in it all. Folks, people die every day and we don't understand why. But God has a greater glory of why that happens. And it doesn't appear very soon what that should be and understand. I'm sure Joseph did not understand how that a Savior was going to be born in Mary, whom he took to be his wife, and he didn't understand how God would protect him when he went to Egypt, and he didn't understand what he was going to do on the cross, but he understood he trusted God. Folks, we don't have to understand all that God's doing, but we do need to trust him for what he's doing for us 
and know that he loves us. And that's easy said because you go through trial after trial after trial after trial, man, you think, God, why are you punishing me? He's not. He's loved you and he's preparing you for a greater thing. You say, yeah, but I, I Lord, I died in trying. Yeah, but you're with him in glory. Yes, but you're with him in glory. And that's how we look at situations in life. When all these troubles come, and I, I, I can think when I have troubles, but you know what I'm learning to see? Be patient, wait upon the Lord, and see what he's done for you and how he got it through, how you got through. Because I know I didn't have the answer, and I know I trusted the Lord, but he made a way when there seemed to be no way, just like he did for his son. There seemed to be no way because Herod was jealous and he sought Jesus from the day of his birth until he died to try to destroy the Savior of the world. But because one man had faith and he listened to God, you and I have a Savior that died for our sins today. His act of obedience made a difference to you and I today. Your act of obedience to God will make a difference to somebody in their life. Even though it may seem hard, it will happen. It says, when he arose, he took the, in verse 14, when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt and was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophets saying, out of Egypt have I called my son. Folks, why did he take him to Egypt? Because he was looking in Bethlehem. God can protect and hide you in situations and things in your life, and he does, just as he did Jesus. God has his hand of protection upon us. He has a hand of protection upon all that's about us. And God has a greater glory, even though I'm sure Joseph did not see that at this time. He may have not seen it until much later, but he did trust God for all things. That's important for us as we make our daily walk. As you celebrate this Christmas time, realize not only this, but as Jesus had a troublesome life and he did it all, he did it all for you and I. He did it all for you and I. Then he says, in verse 16, Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men and was exceedingly worth, and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem, and in all the coast, therefore, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the, of the wise men. Folks, that... That country had a leader that killed every newborn two years and under in that country. Every single one of them. He ordered them death. Folks, regardless of what you think about today and what tomorrow holds and who our leaders are and what direction they choose to go, know that God's here in control. God's hand is about us. And I, I, I don't like what I see in Herod, I don't like in what I see, but by faith in what I see in my Savior, I love it. I trust him. So whether we be present in the body or absent in the body, we'll be present with the Lord, provided that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. God appeared to Joseph in dreams. This changes. And, and as it changes, and it's changed from that time when Christ died on the cross, Go with me over in the book of Hebrews, chapter 1. And there's a word used in verse 1 there of, of Hebrews, chapter 1. It's called sundry. When you and I think of sun dry, we think of a peach dried up in the sun or you dried up and shriveled up in the sun, but that's not the, that's not the sun dry that he's using here in the scriptures. 
sun dry, I need a drink of water. I've been in a desert and I, I could spit, I can't even spit dirt, I just spit dust. That's not sun dry. The sun dry he's talking about is a box of treasures that are little trinkets that you've collected that you put a great price on. Okay, now let's read this. God, who at sun-dry times and unto the and in divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets and by dreams, hath in the last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. This begins to describe our Savior. Jesus Christ. The one I read to you that was born in Bethlehem. The one that was pursued by Herod. The one that was a virgin birth. The one that God promised to you and I and prophesied to the future. The one that spoke to us by the prophets and in dreams. Now look what he has become and always was but is manifested to you and I. Who being in the brightness, verse 3, of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high this is our savior Amen. folks if you have a guilt if you have a sin if you have a problem if you have troubles This one that I said that come of a virgin birth, prophesied by the prophets, foretold and predestined from the foundation of the world, is Jesus Christ incarnated as man as our Lord and Savior that has come and in the sun-dried times where we didn't, didn't have all this treasure manifested, now this treasure is manifested. The treasure is Jesus Christ. The treasure is His coming. The treasure is His glory. The treasure is all things. And He's purged all sin by Himself. And I love this part. God don't speak to us by angels. He speaks to us by His Spirit. And I'm so thankful for that spirit because I don't, have to, I don't have to wonder if my dream was a bad dream. Was it a dream from God? I know God's here. He said, being made so much better than angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. He is to him a father, and we are an heir to him and his, all that he has. And again, when he bringeth in the firstborn into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. Folks, the angels didn't have a choice to worship him. God said, let it be, and it was so, and all the angels of the Lord worshipped him. God's asking us to worship him, to come in by our free will, that he can purge you from your sin, that he has all authority and all power, and he's sitting, on the, he's sitting at the right hand of God. He's waiting and wanting you to trust him, to accept what he did. That all the trials and troubles that he went through in life, all the for everything that he's done was for you to be purged of your sin. We should celebrate this time that we have a God that knows the beginning before the end and he knows the end before the beginning and God knows how to help you and he has a way for you. He knows how to lead you through trials and temptations. But folks, he speaks through his word. And by our faith and patience in serving him, he leads us to the other side. I'm reminded of when Moses went to lead the children out of Egypt. They went and come to the Dead Sea. And it looked as if there was no possible way that they could figure out 
that they weren't going to die and they got in a panic and, and they were all upset and they were complaining to Moses, oh, you brought us out here, now we're going to all die. And God did something they never saw before. He parted the sea. And they went across on dry land. Folks, we're serving a God that will do things you've never seen before and He'll provide a way and He'll part whatever it is to make a way to the other side. That's the God I serve. That's the God I'm celebrating. How about you? Amen? Amen. How about you? It's so glorious when you come to know the Lord. and you, We can be like the children were as He led them out of Egypt. We can gripe and complain in our trouble. But I challenge you to be patient and watch God work. Watch God work in your life. Watch Him put you out on the other side. Is it easy? No. Is it simple? No. But you know, God did all the work. All we have to do is be patient and trust Him. Will you allow God to be patient? Will you be patient and trust God with what's going on in your life? Will you trust God to go on and trust Him? Because God did all these things. He said in verse 6 of Hebrews chapter 1, and again, when He bring in the four, first, and again, when He bringeth in the firstborn into the world, He saith, and let the angels of God worship Him. And the angels, He saith, who maketh these angels spirits and His ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, forever and ever, and a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of the kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even the God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens and the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest and they all shall wax old as doth a garment. Folks, the righteousness of God's going to remain forever. He's laid the foundation of the world and the things that moth and dust doth corrupt. But those things in which the foundation and God's word that he's laid and his righteousness will remain forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. Are you in Christ Jesus? Is he your Savior? Will you trust him today? As it's Christmas time, what will you celebrate? What is your focus? As you face a new year, without Christ, there's no hope. There's only hope through Christ Jesus. Is Jesus your Lord? Let us stand and we'll have a song of invitation. I pray you feel the love of Christ. You trust Him with all the trials and tribulations that come upon your life. Regardless of what the government or the king or whoever is, watch God work when you thought there was no way. God's speaking to you today to make a decision for Him. Would you please do so? If you're at home, maybe you're not here. God's talking to you. Please listen as we sing. Number 118. Have thy affections been nailed to the cross? Is thy heart right?
that's here for worshiping with your heart the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. I wish to you a Merry Christmas, peace, and happiness, but you can only have that through Christ Jesus. I pray that for each and every one of you, those of you who are struggling, find that peace and happiness through Christ Jesus. I pray for those that are sick and are down, and those that don't know Jesus. You would be touched, healed, and let Jesus change your life. God bless you, and thank you for being here today. Randy, would you dismiss us in a word of prayer, please? Dear Lord, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for this message. Um, we thank you for all the blessings you've given us, and we ask that you lift us up and be with all those on our prayer list. And Lord, we thank you mostly for your precious Son, our Savior, whose birthday we celebrate. Let us not forget that, because that is the reason that we have Christmas, and that is the reason that we're, we are here today. We thank you for our Savior, Jesus Christ, and in his name, amen. Amen. amen.